In today's video, I want to discuss some more potential trade opportunities involving Taylor Hall of the New Jersey Devils. Some more teams have been mentioned as potential suitors of the star forward. I also want to look at some trade rumors involving the Montreal Canadiens, and we have some players on waivers as well. We into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of news topics and I want to kick things off with a couple of quick items here involving the NHL waiver wire. Montreal Canadiens goaltender Keith Kincaid has been placed on waivers. Of course, we won't know until noon Eastern time tomorrow if he clears. If he does clear, he will be assigned to their American Hockey League affiliate with Laval. Uh, obviously, they want to get him some more playing time and hope that he can kind of refine uh, his game and get his game back in order here. So far, his short tenure in Montreal has not gone overly well. He's appeared in five games for the Habs this year with the goals against average well over four and a save percentage well under 900, about 877. So clearly, things have not gone well for Kincaid with the Habs so far this year. Of course, with Kincaid on waivers, regardless if he's claimed or not, they will have to call somebody up from the American Hockey League affiliate. It's not quite clear as of yet who it's going to be. Uh, would it be Charlie Lindgren or would it be top prospect goaltender Caden Primo? I'd say Primo has been the better goaltender of the two so far this year. For Laval myself, I would not be shocked if he's given the opportunity. But at the same time, Charlie Lindgren certainly been around pro hockey a lot longer and is also like, because of a lot more experience. So clearly could be a, a potential as well. Now there is a possibility that whoever's called up may not necessarily play. It's really difficult to say they could run with Carey Price. It looks as though the plan would be for them to come up for about two or three games uh, and obviously play the role of the backup. And we'll see depending on Price's play whether or not they would see any ice time or not. It's really hard to say as of right now. Of course, they're hoping Keith Kincaid can go down, play a few games, kind of get back some form, and then be recalled as their current plan of action. But there is a possibility Keith Kincaid could be claimed. I realize with those type of stats that he has this year that the odds may not be great, but there are certainly a number of teams out there looking for goaltending help. So there is a remote possibility that somebody could put in a claim to take the veteran netminder. So let me know what your thoughts are down below. Does Kincaid get claimed? And regardless if he gets claimed or not, who comes up from Laval to play the backup to Carey Price for the next little while? Now, he's not the only player on waivers here today. The Pittsburgh Penguins have also placed forward Joseph Blandizi on waivers. Blandizi was placed on waivers for the likelihood of being assigned to the American Hockey League should he clear as well. It's hard to say if he would be claimed. He is a somewhat versatile forward who can go up and down between the AHL and NHL. He's got a fair bit of NHL games under his belt now. So I guess we will see on noon Eastern time tomorrow if either of these guys end up with a new home or end up in the American Hockey League as their teams are hoping for. Now, as I mentioned here as well, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Taylor Hall. Now, yesterday's video, we talked about the information that was discussed in Saturday Headlines with Elliot Friedman and Chris Johnston, talking about some potential landing spots for Taylor Hall and the likelihood if he would end up being traded sooner than later, or at least ahead of the NHL trade deadline, the consensus among most NHL insiders is that the Devils are already listing the calls and that they would certainly consider trading him well ahead of the deadline to kind of hopefully get a better return, a better package of players and prospects, etc. Because uh, the team that would be acquiring would have them longer and might be willing to pay a little bit more of a price. Uh, obviously, the, whether or not a contract extension has worked out will likely impact the value as well. Uh, they could allow Hall to talk to other teams as part of a trade, you know, but they could allow Hall to talk to other teams on a contract if he wishes to as part of a trade process, or they could place a conditional pick in there as well uh, that if the team that acquires him resigns him, they get additional compensation. So as we discussed yesterday on Saturday Headlines, there was really four main teams that were discussed as potential suitors, including the Montreal Canadiens, the Edmonton Oilers, the St. Louis Blues, and the Colorado Avalanche. Now, Pierre Lebrun, also an NHL insider who works for TSN and also writes for The Athletic, has a new article out discussing who he feels are some of the other potential contenders to land Hall here as well. He mentions three other teams, including the Boston Bruins, the San Jose Sharks, and Hall's hometown team, the Calgary Flames. Now, in a couple of these scenarios, I think it would be very difficult for really any of these teams to make the acquisition of Taylor Hall. But I will caution you on one thing. It is quite possible New Jersey could retain salary, uh, considering the fact that they have lots of space. And they could do that as a sweetener to get more compensation in return from another team to help them out, make the acquisition to help them with their salary cap situation. So I would not rule out a possible 
possibility of a team that's kind of tight to the cap to make it happen, but you also have to look at what assets they have that they can include as well. In the case of the San Jose Sharks, they already are without a 2020 first round pick that belongs to Ottawa that they gave up in the Eric Carlson trade. Uh, so clearly that's not something they can provide. Uh, they could look to include their 2021 pick, but I would think New Jersey is going to want a 2020 first round pick as part of this. They could take a 2021 one, but but in my opinion, 2020 would be by far their first choice and most preferential way to, to include that in a trade. Now, of course, the other possibility here with the San Jose Sharks is they are very tight on cap space. And so what would they give up in return? The San Jose Sharks are not a team that has a very deep prospect pool. They're low on picks. And I'm not really sure that the Devils are going to want, you know, anything much in return that's going to be able to play right away or any kind of bad contract. So it's kind of difficult to say that the Sharks would have the necessary assets. I can see them being very interested for sure. I can see the Sharks and Doug Wilson, who's not afraid to make big moves, make some kind of big acquisition or at least try to uh, to make another deep playoff run. I can certainly see that playing out and certainly see that as being a strong possibility. I just think based on New Jersey's situation that I'm not really sure that the Sharks are going to have much of what they're going to want. So uh, could it happen? Possibly, but I think it'd be a pretty tough deal for the Sharks to pull off. Same goes for the case of the Boston Bruins. Now, the Bruins are already a team that's very tight up against the cap, and I don't see Don Sweeney really mortgaging too much of the future in order to gain Taylor Hall. Now, could they use Taylor Hall? Absolutely. He would really make their top six that much more lethal. Can you imagine Hall already joining the mix of guys like Brad Marchand, David Pasternak, Patrice Bergeron, Jake DeBrusque, uh, David Krejci? It would certainly be a lethal top six, and it would certainly, you know, really push them to the forefront of being that much even stronger of a Stanley Cup contender. But could they they pull off a trade it's difficult to say they have some young interesting prospects including players like Vakanine and Stanika but I'm not really sure that the Boston Bruins are going to want to part with those guys they do have some draft picks they could include but I know in the past they've given up first round picks and they've seemed to be a little bit more hesitant to do that uh, you know in the last little bit so not really sure that the Bruins would be a good fit again I can understand the need and why LeBron would include them in the conversation here uh, the Boston Bruins really are probably one you know extra strong forward like Hall or maybe even somebody not even quite that strong to really push them over the top here uh, to really be that much more of a contender and kind of solidify things as not only being a contender, but the favorite to win a Stanley Cup because they're already one of the top best teams in the NHL. Now, his hometown team, the Calgary Flames, probably makes a little bit more sense, but again, it's going to be challenging for them to pull this off. I do think the Flames have a little bit more of an interesting prospect pool that might intrigue New Jersey. Uh, there was some talk before about Goudreau for Hall. I don't see that happening primarily because of the fact that Johnny Gaudreau has you know more time left on his contract they're not going to trade them straight up one for one and have you know potentially Taylor Hall for only a half a season or something or less and then lose him to not have Gaudreau either that would not make sense for the Flames but of course we saw you know a lot of things going around in that team with the coaching change and all the Bill Peters stuff uh, they have bounce back well since the coaching change has been officially announced and Jeff Ward has taken over. So we will see how things go. I don't think the Flames are going to want to rush into anything. I can see Brad Tree Living being very careful. But, you know, again, all these teams that LeBron are mentioning, there is a fit there, realistically, if you look at their lineup. Uh, but between cap space and having the assets to land the player are certainly going to be difficult to do. I think the teams I talked about yesterday uh, that were mentioned on Saturday headlines are a little bit more logical and make a little bit more sense here. But let me know based on yesterday's video and today's video who you feel are the top contenders to land Taylor Hall. Now, I want to jump back here and talk about the Montreal Canadiens. As we already said, Keith Kincaid is on waivers, so we'll see if there's going to be any kind of claims or if there's going to be anything more permanent to their goaltending situation. But as we know, the Habs are in a major slump right now. Eric Engels of Sportsnet has a recent article out discussing the fact that they need to do something, whether it's Mark Bergevin making a trade or whether or not it's firing head coach Claude Julien and making a change at the head coach position. We've seen Mark Bergevin be pretty patient in the past. I know before Julian was brought in with Michelle Therrien, uh, he was quite patient and really took his time in doing that. So I'm not sure that's going to happen here just yet. If you take a look though, the fact that they could acquire a guy like Hall, like we discussed yesterday, would be absolutely huge for that team. I think they're one really strong forward away from really becoming that much more stronger of a team and being more of a legit contender for a playoff spot. 
But at the same time, lately, their goaltending and defense has been a bigger part of the problem than their offense has. Yes, they need more offense, but their other parts of their team have been letting them down recently as well. Carey Price is in a bit of a funk. Their defense has proven to be unreliable, a little bit soft at times as well. So they could certainly use a boost uh, in backup goaltending and along the blue line. Now, they might get that backup goaltending help from the American Hawks League, and they very well might be able to get Keith Kincaid back into form. I don't think they're going to rush too much on the goaltending front. I know there was some crazy talk I did hear uh, in the last week or so about you know them possibly trading Carey Price, but I really don't see that happening unless the only way for me that it would take place is if he uh, asked for a trade out of Montreal and said he didn't want to play there anymore like we saw with Patrick Waugh. But now to make matters worse, they've also lost Victor Mete for two weeks due to an ankle injury. And really outside of Shea Weber, a lot of the blue line has been struggling as well. If you look at some of their forwards, uh, some of their production is really down big time. Like Max Domi is not nearly on pace for what he did last year had over 70 points last year now he's on track for about 50 so that's a 20 point difference that's pretty substantial year over year of course he's in a contract year as well so that's certainly going to impact him from a financial standpoint and of course uh, you know youngster Jasperi Kock in the Emmy is certainly struggling as well he had 34 points last year as a rookie and now he's only on pace for about 20 things are really down uh, there's been some talk whether or not he could go down to the American Hockey League and get some more development time maybe he was rushed into things there's been a lot of chatter around that particular player as well other young players like Nick Suzuki are certainly performing a little bit stronger Kale Fleury has been pretty decent as well I mean he certainly had a share of struggles too but overall not too bad so what do the Montreal Canadiens do do they go after a big name like Taylor Hall do they make something a little bit more moderate of a trade there's all kinds of forwards out there or defense it would be like a you know second line forward or a second pair of defense that have been mentioned on the trade market you've got Tyler Toffoli in Los Angeles you got Alec Martinez as another defenseman with the Kings I know Bergevin's been caught scouting the Blackhawks a lot lately as well well maybe there's some players on that roster that they're having a look at so they certainly do need to do something they have a lot of holes in their team right now uh, this losing skid needs to come to an end quickly if they're going to have any hope of making the playoffs and you get other teams like Toronto picking things up you got Boston Florida so it's just getting more and more difficult for them to hold on or really be a playoff contender if they don't stop the bleeding here soon. So if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, I would like to know what your preference would be. Would you prefer to see a change in head coach? Or do you think a trade is what this team needs to really change things up to give them a different dynamic on the ice? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.